and I'm so glad to have you joining me in my studio again today to talk about art supplies. This week, I'm going to talk about paper. Watercolor paper, I think, is the one supply that you don't want to skimp on. Cheap paper is going to leave you more frustrated than anything else, especially when you're first starting out. There are so many different brands that make paper and there are different ways that paper can come. My favorite way to work with watercolor paper is in what are called blocks of paper. A watercolor block is taped on all four sides and then there's a little gap where you can put your knife in and separate the pages when you're finished. The benefit of working on a block of watercolor paper is that you don't have to first stretch the paper. It keeps it relatively flat and this prevents the paper from buckling. If you're using a lot of water, your paper may still buckle a little bit, but I have found that for my botanicals, there's not a lot of buckling. Using higher quality paper also helps with this. There are two main types of paper that I use. One type is cold press and the other is hot press. Cold press has a lot more texture to the paper than hot press. Hot press is a lot more smooth. I found that there's a lot of variation from brand to brand in terms of how smooth or how rough their hot or cold press paper is. When you're first starting out, I would recommend using cold press paper because it's easier to work with. Here are some of the papers that I like to use. The Sennelier paper is really nice. I'm not going to be demoing it today because I don't have enough of it. It comes in sort of strange sizes though and it's kind of expensive. The Arches Cold and Hot Press are some of my favorite papers to use. They're very high quality and they're widely available. They are somewhat on the expensive side though. Fabriano is a brand that a lot of artists like to use. Personally, it's not my favorite. This one is Hot Press. Windsor & Newton Cold Press Paper I have been using and really enjoy that one as well. As well as the Cold Press Paper from Blick Premier. I really like it. I've tried this Langdon Prestige and this is a hot press paper. I like this a lot. Um, what's interesting is that although it's considered extra smooth, I find that it really has a lot more tooth than some of the other hot press papers, which I'll be showing you a little bit later. So this is just a larger size block from Arches. And all of these brands have various sizes that you can purchase. And then the Canson Heritage Paper in both cold and hot press, that I really enjoy using. And when it's on sale, it's a pretty good bargain. Really, it's up to personal preference what you like working with most. So let's try some. So here are some small pieces that I cut of all these different papers just to give you an idea of how different they all are. On the top these are all cold press and on the bottom they're all hot press. And one thing that you're going to notice is the color difference. Especially this Fabriano paper is very yellow and then these Arches papers are really creamy. The Windsor Newton and the Blit Premier cold press papers, those are the brightest, whitest ones that I have. And the other ones are a little more off-white. I'm just going to paint some simple color swatches on these little sample pieces just to show you how the paint works. And I'm just using this golden orange color from Yarka St. Petersburg. And I'm just hoping to use enough water here. Just give you a sample color. So you can see on the cold press, 
there's more texture. Although a smoother cold press paper has less texture. And there's a big texture difference between these papers. You can see it a bit in the edges where there's not as much water. I prefer a paper that'll give you a nice clean edge. And as long as you're using plenty of water, that shouldn't be a problem. So I've arranged these in order from most texture to least texture for the cold press. Let's see how the hot press is different. Now you can see one thing that's a little disconcerting about the hot press paper is that it seems to ball up under the paint and you get these little bits. So when you're working with it, it can look like it's not very smooth or that you're damaging the paper. You're not going to see that as much once the paper has dried. You can see how the, the paint reacts differently with the paper. And you can see it gives you more lines, more paint lines. That's the Fabriano and the, that one I don't really like using very much. So really, Use whatever you have and you'll learn how it works and you'll get your own preferences. Now this is the Langdon Prestige. And this one, you can see how much more tooth the paper has than let's say the Arches Hot Press. These are both hot press, but this is almost a more, it's almost more like the cold press, this Blick Premier, which is sort of somewhat smoother. So you'll learn which you like by how um, it works with your paints and it's all personal preference. Let's look at some finished paintings. So I also wanted to show you some finished paintings on the different types of paper. This is a hot press. It may have been on the Langdon Prestige. It has a little bit more tooth than some of the others. This is that Sennelier paper and this is the hot press version of it. And you can see how smooth the paint looks on the page. This is a cold press paper and there is more texture which I especially enjoy in things like terracotta pots. Here's another cold press um, peony flower and helps give some nice texture to those petals. There's also a large variation in terms of prices of paper. I know that some of these blocks of watercolor paper are very expensive and it can be hard to spend a lot of money on something you're not sure you will like. That's why testing things out before you buy them is nice if you can buy single pages. But also, I was thinking the other day about how if you're working in another medium, like acrylic or oils, then you're either purchasing panels or canvases to work on, and that is so much more expensive than purchasing watercolor paper. So when you think of it that way, it doesn't feel so bad to experiment and play and have some failed paintings, which everyone has failed paintings. It's just an inevitable part of creating. Don't let it stop you. Again, experiment, see what you like, try different things out, and I know you'll have your own personal preference. 
I know this just scratches the surface on the topic of watercolor paper, but I hope that it's been helpful for you.